So last week, Canada finally enacted its nationwide ban on so-called conversion therapy. Our neighbors to the north uh, now join several other countries like Germany and and Brazil and uh, up to, I think, 20 U.S. states now in banning the alleged practice. Though the Canadian law ups the ante considerably, under the statute, as as the New York Times reports, it is a crime to, quote, provide or promote services intended to change or repress a person's sexual orientation or gender expression. And violators who are found guilty of engaging in this illicit activity will be subject to five years in prison. And those who merely uh, don't even engage in it but promote it are looking at two years behind bars. Now, this immediately raises a question that most corporate media articles on the subject have uh, not really bothered to answer. But a pretty obvious question, which is, uh, what is it? What are we talking about? What specifically is conversion therapy? We've all heard the the phrase before, um, but what is it? Now, left-wing propaganda about the practice, which often uses words like barbaric and violent and brutal to describe it, brings to mind images of homosexuals, you know, committed against their will to insane asylums in straitjackets, maybe strapped to gurneys and given electric shocks until they change their mind about their sexual orientation. But that sort of thing isn't happening in the modern Western world. So what then do these conversion therapy prohibitions actually prohibit? Well, for that answer, we should probably turn to the legislation itself. I think it's probably the best place to go. Uh, Bill C-4, which begins by telling us that, quote, conversion therapy causes harm to society because, among other things, It is based on and propagates myths and stereotypes about sexual orientation, gender identity, and gender expression, including the myth that heterosexuality, cisgender gender identity, and gender expression that conform to the sex assigned a person at birth are to be preferred over other sexual orientations, gender identities, and gender expressions. Now, in one fell swoop here, um, sexual morality as it is understood by billions of people across the world and throughout history, and has been taught by every major world religion for thousands of years, has been legally consigned to the status of myth. And the belief that it's better for a person to accept their biological identity than to, than to try and reject it in favor of an identity that they can never truly obtain, a belief shared by nearly every human being who has ever walked the earth, joins biblical sexual morality under the fairy tale umbrella, because that's a myth too. But we still don't know what exactly conversion therapy is, right? Now, fortunately, there's a section of the bill which purports to offer a a definition. In fact, it says definition of conversion therapy. Okay, that's good. Now, here's what it says. Conversion therapy means a practice, treatment, or service designed to, A, change a person's sexual orientation to heterosexual, change a person's gender identity to cisgender, C, change a person's gender expression so that it conforms to the sex assigned to the person at birth, D, repress or reduce non-heterosexual attraction or sexual behavior, E, repress a person's non-cisgender gender identity, or F, repress or reduce a person's gender expression that does not conform to the sex assigned to the person at birth. And then it continues and says, For greater certainty, this definition does not include a practice, treatment, or service that relates to the exploration or development of an an integrated personal identity, such as a practice, treatment, or service that relates to a person's gender transition, and that is not based on an assumption that a particular sexual orientation, gender identity, or gender expression is to be preferred over another. Now, the wording here is still quite vague um, by, by design. I mean, this is intentional. But it's clear that conversion therapy certainly need not involve straitjackets or electric shocks. So we're way beyond that. Any practice, treatment, or service. You think about the word practice. What is a practice? It's just a thing that you do. So just anything at all, which seeks to in any way, quote, change or repress a person's, quote, non-cisgender identity or non-heterosexual attraction is conversion therapy and could land you in prison for half a decade. Now, under this definition, um, there is no conversion taking place when a young boy is, say, chemically castrated in order to make him look more like a girl, or when a young girl is given a double mastectomy in order to make her look more like a boy. You know, that's not conversion. Rather, it is conversion 
if they are convinced not to be butchered in this way. If you convince them not to do this, if you convince a girl not to go have her breast chopped off, then you are guilty of conversion therapy for, for convincing her to keep the body she was born with. Um, by encouraging a boy to accept the fact that he is a boy or encouraging a girl to accept the fact that she's a girl, you are engaging in conversion therapy under this law. It is conversion therapy to explain to a male that he is male and to help him embrace his natural identity. If you simply said to a, a boy, well, you're a biological male, that means you're a boy. That's conversion therapy, according to this. Now, does that mean that any counselor, therapist, teacher, pastor, or even parent who refuses to encourage a child gender delusion is guilty of violating this law and could end up behind bars for five years? Yeah, that's explicitly what it means. Does it mean that any priest or minister who stands at the pulpit on Sunday and preaches about sexual morality, not a lot of them doing that in Canada or in the United States, but if they do it, or even read a passage from the Bible like uh, you know Romans uh, 126 through 27, one of the many biblical passages which condemns the homosexual act, um, does that mean that, that, that anyone who does that is now a conversion therapist and liable to a lengthy prison sentence? Yeah, again, that's very clearly what it means. Once again, the prohibition includes any practice, treatment, or service. Wording that encompasses literally anything that anyone in any position might do or say to contradict the radical left's harebrained theories about sex and gender. Now, there is ambiguity here. Um, tyrants love legal ambiguity because it gives them free reign to do essentially whatever they want, you know. But there's there's no subtlety. So notice how the bill specifically forbids the repression of non-cisgender and non-heterosexual identities, but does not forbid repression the other way. So it is expressly not a crime to impose transgenderism on a child or homosexuality on a child. It's only a crime in the reverse. And the law is written that way. That's the way the law is written. You cannot, as it says, change a person's gender identity to cisgender. But there's nothing forbidding you from changing it to trans. It would have been easier, clearer, and less wordy to prohibit all attempts to change or repress a person's sexuality or gender. But the bill, very conspicuously, does not do that. I mean, why doesn't it just say, uh, it's a it's a crime to change a person's gender identity, period. No, they they specified which direction you're not allowed to change it in. That's because the demented leftist despots and child predators who are behind these anti-conversion therapy laws, um, they don't actually have a problem with sexual coercion or manipulation. They have a problem with heterosexuality and biological science. And that's what this is really about. And they also, of course, have a problem with religion. And this is an effort to criminalize religion. I mean, this, this is, it would not be an exaggeration to say that this is a criminalization of every, of, of all the Abrahamic religions. Because um, one of the most crucial aspects of their moral teachings are, are verboten now. Legally so. In fact, if the term conversion therapy means anything at all, the only sort of conversion therapy that happens in the Western world is the sort that converts people away from heterosexuality and biological sex, not into it. I mean, only an idiot or a partisan could look at surveys showing that 40% of Generation Z identify as LGBT and conclude that this is some sort of natural evolution. 40%? We're talking 300, 400, 500% increase in a couple of years. Now, we can be sure that if, this was a, if there was a pronounced drop in LGBT identities, if the LGBT communities, uh, community, if the ranks of the LGBT community were to shrink over the course of a few years, rather than have this astronomic rise, the left would conclude without hesitation that there must be a conspiracy um, of, of repression and eradication at work here. And that is exactly what's happening, but going the other way. 
There, there has been a many-fold increase in non-straight, non-biological identities, a jump unlike anything the world has ever seen, period. And there's nothing accidental about it. The LGBT lobby is, as I've been saying for years, running the most successful recruitment drive in American history. And it's pretty easy for it to be successful because they have the media, the school system, corporate America, and the government on their side. You know, it's easy to win converts when you have all of the most powerful institutions in the world working with you. And especially when your target audience are children who don't know any better. Good example of this. A video went viral over the weekend showing one conversion therapy victim uh, kind of go off script unexpectedly. The child's mother put him in front of a camera for a TikTok uh, video, for a TikTok live, you know, answering questions. And the idea was he was supposed to deliver LGBT talking points, the ones he'd been assigned, because that's all that this child is to this mother. He's just a vessel um, for, for LGBT propaganda. But, you know, kids say the darndest things sometimes. So here's how that went. White people that aren't like serial killers like Ted Bundy. Does your mom say you have to be LGBT? Um, no. no, I can choose what I want to be, but some. But. On. Go ahead, Lex. Go ahead. Keep talking. Say what you're saying. Um, my mom doesn't matter if I'm up, if I am gay or lesbian or any of that. She doesn't care. All she cares about is that I'm a part of it. And if I'm not a part of it, she'll try to convince me to uh, um, get, join it. Because I... What? Are you saying right now? Facts. That I would convince you to join what? The LGBTQIA+. Now, if the child in that video had said that uh, his mother was trying to convince him to be straight, you know, the police would have barreled through her door and carted her away in handcuffs by now. Instead, he reveals that he's being psychologically conditioned to be some version of gay... And his abuser will pay no price for it. There'll be no penalty, no punishment. This is the approved form of conversion therapy in America and in the Western world. Millions of children fall victim to it. It's the only kind of conversion therapy that's allowed and the only kind that exists. Well, I hope you enjoyed that clip from The Matt Wall Show. If you did, go ahead and hit that subscribe button right down there so you can stay up to date on all of our future content.